So what's going on? Is everybody fishing? Yeah, I wish. I, I, uh, yeah. So hey guys, listen, I just, uh, you caught me mid-conversation with my longtime buddy here. We're, we're somewhat social distancing. Yeah. This is uh, Lucas. Lucas is, uh, what is your actual title? I'm executive vice president for Lorenz. Executive vice president for Lorenz. Yeah. When I met him, he was a brand new guy at Lorenz that was also excited about kayak fishing and was the champion for a lot of my crazy ideas. And literally, it's so much easier to work with a company when somebody at that company actually does it. And so he's been at the forefront of spearheading a lot of initiatives like the partnerships with Hobie, you know, and a lot of the integration stuff, the transducer mount, yep. all of that stuff from the get go. And then who's this creepy dude just yeah. kind of standing over there talking? Yeah, Jeremiah Clark, uh, product director for Lorant. So I've worked with Luke for way too long now. Yeah. Uh, we go way back uh, actually into the Boaters World days. We worked retail together about a million years ago. Uh, and I've been with Lorant for 10 years now. So kind of kayak fisherman myself, he, Luke got me on the Hobie train. Uh, pretty much any you know kayak fishing. I was always a bass boat guy and I've got a I got a PA 14 at the house Rigged up minus one unit that I loaned to Luke today so he could go out and hit the water <laughs> and guys I just want to point this out. This was a total accident I did not mean to wear Lorenz blue today, <laughs> but it just kind of happened it's, that it's way But anyway, so we're gonna go in we're gonna do a little bit of a short I'd say we'll call it a tour uh, of Lorenz, but it's also COVID-19 so there's very few people here everybody's working from home he was actually you know he was actually good enough to come in and do the headquarters tour for me today because everybody's working from home so without further ado let's go uh, look around Lawrence. this is the fish locator this was the original uh, thing that put Lawrence on the map we sold over 1 million of these it was really the first recreational uh, fish finder for the masses. And uh, this is one that's actually in the box still with the uh, unused, with the manual and everything. It's awesome. But All right, guys. So we're going to let Lucas tell you the magic behind customer service yeah, here at Lawrence. I actually started in customer service. And uh, so here we have a lot of agents here in Tulsa. And we've got this wonderful board where they can come over. And as you're talking to them, they can walk through the, the setups and the way you have yours. And I'll give you a little helpful tent, a hint. So on Mondays is our biggest call volume. So obviously everybody goes to the water on the weekends, the first thing they uh, do and have questions, they call us on Mondays. Well, we have literally double the call volumes on Mondays. So if you call us on a Monday, we have higher wait times. So do yourself a favor, maybe use us Tuesday through through Friday, you'll have a better experience. And we also have a callback function. So if you leave your name and phone number, our system will automatically keep your spot in line and call you back, saving you a bunch of time and hassle. So. Perfect, that's awesome. And then what's really cool over here is this is our uh, R&D department, which there's a bunch of guys down the lab, but we basically became like a global startup company where we have people in their garages, 3D printing things. Like we kept everything rolling in product development um, throughout this whole thing, just from people's homes. Help you out for your journey here. Grind some beans, everything. Nice. We just need to do some voice command to it. Right. Then we'll be done. Right, so Jeremiah's a prankster like I am. So show yeah. me what you did to the coffee machine. So we got a brand new coffee machine last year, and I, you know, it's got nice buttons and everything else in this nice LCD. And I thought, man, it really looks like she's trying to talk. So I actually made a label that said "now voice activated." Just say "hello coffee" to start, and just watch people <laughs> line up and yell did, at an inanimate object. And you didn't video phenomenal. that. You should have had a no, GoPro we, set over a camera. I didn't think it was going to take off the way it did, but I, <laughs> I sit over here. The coffee machine is thirty yards that way, and I could hear people yelling "hello coffee." <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now we're about to head to the lab. This is our boat garage. This is uh, our test boats. So as you can see, uh, about three of them are missing because they're at our houses right now where we can use them. Um, we've got a couple of small boats. So obviously we have some of our kayaks. We have our sonar mannequin laying in this one. Uh, we've got our boat rover. Um, shot a lot of commercials in. And then uh, a lot of test equipment. So we've got our thumper, which is uh, what we use for shock testing for 45 G's. Uh, we put our trolling motors on there and our head units uh, and pound them to death for several days. Um, obviously, we got our ghost trolling motor on our, our test boats here. We've got our, our pontoon boats that we use for testing. The pontoons are great year round because we can put up shade in the uh, summer and we can close them in the winter and uh, keep testing year round. So, lots of transducers on those boats as well. 
But uh, we'll go on inside and look at the torture chamber. Yeah, so the Ghost trolling motor launched at ICAST last year, and it's proven to be a, a great product. So it is the, the lightest, the most efficient, most powerful, and fully integrated with Lorentz, and uh, it's been an extreme success. So it's the uh, first of many trolling motors for us. Cool. All right. There's some sensitive stuff in this room. We don't want to shoot that right now. We've got some. So I can't show any on. of that back you in there. Can show it probably from this distance. This distance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. But uh, we can go around and, sh and, and shoot the other sonar tank when we get there. Yeah. So in here we have uh, UV test chambers. So our, our xenon test chambers. Uh, these are also ovens. So we can actually not only do UV, we can also test at um, different temperatures. Have a whole rack of ovens behind you. So we test our products up to, depending on the product, what temperature we test to, we also can freeze them and make them really cold. Uh, you know, and you got this big guy here, so this is a temp cycle chamber. Uh, and then in this room, we actually have our salt spray machine. So our products are mainly used, for Lorance are mainly used inland, but if they can last, and you know, in, in the salt fog test we do, they're good for inland and coastal applications. So we have, this is a salt spray test machine built up with, you know, all kinds of fun stuff to see how much corrosion we can get on them and basically we do before and after so every piece that goes in the machine we'll cut it in half we'll say what the sample looked like before we put it through hell and then we kind of compare afterwards and we kind of come over here and take photos of them before and after with uh, our nice lovely photo booth extensive testing is key to every successful company the companies that don't plan to test are basically planning to fail all right, so this is uh, what makes Lawrence Lawrence, right? It's all about sonar, it's about finding fish, and so we have a large acoustic tank here. Uh, this is where we do our transducer development. So um, smart guys set over here with lots of screens, analyze crystals, uh, analyze beam patterns, uh, frequencies, and we do all of our testing here. So. Where are the fish? <laughs> Sometimes there's a small <laughs> tennis ball. <laughs> All right, guys, so we made it out to the water, and I basically am hill hooking Lucas's boat, and he is going to give us the rundown. What you got going on here, sir? All right, so on my boat, I run a HDS Live 9, and so the reason I do that is, for one, sunlight visibility of the screen is the best in class. So uh, you can see here, bright bluebird skies, crisp sunlight, uh, easy to see. So I've got my traditional sonar, which is great for marking fish, great for tracking baits. I've got my side scan, and so on this boat, I've got an active imaging three-in-one that's underneath the boat. And then what's really cool is I've rigged mine up with live sonar. So I've got live sight, and I've actually got it mounted on a pole. And so what I can do is I'm sitting here, and I can look out. So I'm looking at 40 feet out, or in 10 feet of water. I can actually take and point it over this direction now and search that area. So here I can see two fish sitting there and moving away, and I can steer literally that direction and know where to cast where to catch fish so live sonar steerable sonar on a kayak to me is a must-have it's something we've got on our in our big bass boats and it's something that we now explain have. how that is in your big bass boat when you say live steerable because a guy's not going to see that on their bass boat and they're going to go what are you talking about there is a lot of poles being added to bass boats really? these days but they're also on trolling on motors. the trolling motor yeah exactly and so i, I just wanted to make it make sense for my audience because a lot of guys are just kayak fishermen and absolutely yeah. but honestly you know, with GPS anchoring on a trolling motor and it's steering, yep. you can't see where exactly. you're So that's why these poles are becoming more. And so who makes that pole? Uh, this is by Fishing Specialist, but there's, there is several ones. But this is a nice low profile one that I really like for kayak. Okay, do you mind pulling that up so everybody yeah. can take a look at what it looks like? Yeah, so it's just a nice quick release. So I have my live sight. Doesn't hang too far down. Cool, well guys, one of those will be right around here pretty dang on soon <laughs> so yeah. especially for the deep water fishing like ledge fishing kentucky lake going out deep on gunnersville once the the summer bite fully kicks in so show us what we're looking at right there right so first off i always say charting is the most important thing when you're going to a lake because you got to break it down you got to know where to start and we use cmap and we have uh done insight genesis of this lake so we have one foot contours of this whole lake it's free it's a free service you sign up for and then you can download this here. And so with this HDS, I've also set up my custom color palette. So now I can say my deep water is white, my uh, shallowest water is red, and then you can very easily see points and transitions by using these custom colors. That just makes a giant body of water so small and easy to go pick out the spot you want on. So you're saying somebody that signs up for a Genesis account can simply go download that map right there, and then you've got it color-coded 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just go in and set up your custom colors. It's really easy. There's some videos out there that we did, mm -hmm. uh, but it allows you to, to key in and say, man, today's, you know, I'm looking for this light green or, you know, I want to find these longer, uh, you know, troughs that are maybe in the back here, but it allows you to break apart a lake without having to look at each squiggly line or see how close they are. Colors just make it easy. You know, it's like easy to read like a crayon. And so tell everybody where they can find out more about Genesis and where they can find out about how to set a map up and do the color palette like you're talking about. Yeah, so on the CMAP uh, website is definitely where you can go learn about Genesis and you can see our mapping that we have available. And then we just did our Lawrence webinar series and we covered charting extensively on there. So webinar series, it's on the top of the Lawrence.com site right now. Uh, those are your two spots to go and learn. Lucas reached back for a rod and said, hey, let me show you something. I said, well, hey man, don't show me. Let's show the, <laughs> let's show the world. So uh, he's setting his unit up now. Yeah. And uh, you see right there where it says initializing live site. You need like a robot voice or a hot chick voice that says initializing live site. Work on that. You guys comment in the comment section below and let us know if you think we need that. We'll make sure and call it the we'll be, We need like Elizabeth Hurley. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or we can do my wife. She can be like, initialize the live site. I like her accent better anyway. All right, cool. So with live sonar, this is uh, right basically at the bottom of the transducer. And then this is looking at 40 feet in front of me. And so what I'm looking to do is find... See the grass here? Yep. This is grass out in front. This is some fish movement here. And basically what I can do is I can take my bait, drop it out, and just give you a quick little demonstration there. So you can see it dropping down here. That's crazy. And then I can work my bait. There's the size range. And so you can see how I, when I move that, I can, I can see it. And so what I'm doing is I'm wanting to see fish come to the bait or react to the bait. And this helps me understand if, one, if I'm on fish, two, if I'm throwing the right thing, right? And so this is a uh, this is why live sonar is so easy to understand. You know, with traditional sonar, it, it pings and scrolls across, and you say, "Well, this is the most current history," and then you know this. But this is the whole screen's live. So there, right there, is a fish. So really, when you get into more advanced sonar, it's actually easier. That's right. So live is for dummies. Yes. You know. There you go. Yeah. So I'll just drop her back out there again. This is you know, this is the ultimate technology for crappie fishermen. Like if you're a serious crappie angler. You need live sonar. I mean, you can go and pick off every crappie out of a brush pile. I mean, it's it's amazing. Amazing. All right, guys, so we're running this thing real time. We're doing live. There not quite live, but I'm recording it. But you know what I'm saying. So you don't get a better demonstration than going to the source itself. Um, <laughs> actually, before you make your next cast, I'm going to say this. I've literally said to myself, I can't justify going from the TI-2 to live on a kite because that unit right there is bad to the bone. That's the mm -hmm. TI. Uh, I just picked up the TI-2. Yeah. And I actually told Lucas, I said, you know, convince me that the live is worth the extra money. And immediately the first thing he said was better visibility with polarized glasses. I was like, dang it. Because as a kayak fisherman, <laughs> you're low and you got the polarized okay. glasses on. And you, if you take them off, you're blind for an hour. So that was one for sure. And then not realizing how easy it was for live because I couldn't figure out the, the whole, how do you keep it where you want to look? So anyway, you're probably going to, look at that bait just falling right on this. Look at that. So this is video game fishing. This is like fishing on an old flasher back in the day with a, uh, over an ice fishing hole. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can see my bait there sitting on the screen as I move it, thumbs around. So what we're going to do is, uh, try to find some of these longer points out here. Find, mark some fish, and then put some baits on them, and uh, see if we can convince any to bite today. Sounds good. Yeah, let's uh, pop over to the left side. We've got some good flooded timber over there, uh, and we can, you know, throw some wet rigs at them. So guys, I'm going to leave my graph off for right now just because I'm going to be pulling up close to Lucas when he wants to show us stuff and I don't want the, you know, the transducers talking and all that craziness that you get. One thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're fishing graphs is I have people that mount two transducers that far from, from each other. It doesn't work. Um, it doesn't matter what units they are. There's going to be some signal cross contamination. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to have 14 inches minimum. I think tw is 12 the technical answer? For me, it's about frequencies. Frequencies, so if, yeah. If you want 
to run 83 kilohertz today, and I run 200, they won't talk. Gotcha. So, but if uh, we're, we're on similar... I was on high chirp, and you yeah, were on, on high chirp, high chirp so, <laughs> so we were that's why they were cross-talking. Yeah. I was like, what in the hell? And I was literally motoring along beside him going, what is going on with my graph? How am I going to be having a problem the day I'm fishing with the Lawrence guy? <laughs> and uh, that's what it was. So, but for the most part, separating frequencies, but also a minimum distance. On my kayak, I'll run a small unit sometimes when I'm just scouting and my big unit in the center and I'll put the transducer to where they're at least 14 inches apart but I try to get them a couple feet so I'll mount one off of the track off the back one off the front and I just have to in my mind interpolate you know where the two signals are coming from for my comparison points all right so guys as we were motoring over um, Lucas was telling me some really juicy stuff about tournament fishing so I twisted his arm it's not really hard to see how, see how skinny his arm is right there He's fit, just not big. But uh, so here's the thing. He was telling me the three, the 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 three. What, what did you call it? Three different types. The of The three different types here. of sonars, and then the way you break a fishery yeah. down. So yeah. kind of run the guys through that real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. So I always start with searching. I want to cover a wide area. So for that, I use my side scan. I set it at a hundred foot manual range. And to me, this is just something I'm used to seeing. It allows it to ping really fast, and it draws a great picture. And so now for reference what is the widest you can set it and what's the narrowest you can set it at uh up to 300 feet i believe okay. and the narrow is as low as 20 feet okay so i usually run uh around 100 foot range and so what this is going to do it's going to start showing it to the left of the boat to the right of the boat and this is the water column in between and so you can see right here we're starting to show some rocks and you can always zoom in and, and run a little less range if you want so um you can see right here i've got some great rocks so I'm going to go ahead and waypoint those rocks. Go ahead and put my, my waypoint there, and I can change that um, icon. So I'm going to actually make it a, a physical rock. So save. Now that I've got that on the mark there. And I what I do, guys, just to throw in there real quick, is I use shorthand. So for rock, for me, it's RK. So I'll put like RK1. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you can always go back and edit them. Yep. Okay, so now I've got this waypoint right here. You can see a rock sitting here on my chart. And you can see it was actually uh, right there to the side. So now I would go back over it and kind of confirm it with the traditional sonar. Uh, and then once I'm on top of that spot or close to it and I want to cast to it, that's when I switch to my live sonar. So that's when I use my live sight and actually point it at it. And so it's searching, it's confirming, and then it's targeting. Like if you can do those three things on you know, most of your spots, you won't just kind of be fishing all day. You'll, you'll actually be you know, purposely targeting spots. And I think that's really what helps me uh, as a tournament angler is I've, I've studied the lake with a great chart. I got out there. I searched to confirm what I thought was cool. And then once I've got it all marked up and ready to go, then I feel like my chances of catching a fish are really strong. And, and so, you know, they say time is money. And so if you're an angler that's out there and you're saying, how do I justify the expense of a HDS? How do I justify the expense of a live? Time's money. If you're wanting to be competitive and you're looking for that competitive advantage, that's part of it. But if you're also talking about when you have limited time to pre-fish, the more you can eliminate quick, the more quickly you can eliminate things or confirm things, the better you're going to be and the more successful you're going to be. So if I was tournament fishing, there's no way I wouldn't have it. So, and then I'm going to have it soon either way, because again, prior to this trip and on my conversations uh, on the road, on the way over here, I literally just, what I did, I put you on the spot, right? I said, convince me to buy live if I've already got a TI2. I can do everything damn near i've ever needed to do and catch a heck of a lot of fish but i'll tell you this i was on table rock struggling for the last two or three days i would have given my left foot for that system to be able to start really confirming that where fish are or where fish aren't so that i could uh yeah i could cover more water more quickly so let's do this man let's uh i'm gonna let go of you let you find some fish and once you find sure. one and try to confirm it we'll uh we'll bring you guys that part of it all right so i'm easing up on this flat as you can see here with the traditional sonar, I got this on 200 to stay away from the chirp frequency. And um, it's just flat as a pancake. It's got about as many curves as Miley Cyrus, if you're looking at it right there. And uh, this is easy to find something in when you pull up on something like this. I'm at like 14 now and still nothing. Okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that's actually a point right there that extends out. Okay.
See these Z's right there? That's yo-yo and a jig over the top of a brush pile. So that's where you can see your lure on your graph. All right, so guys, I worked this little grass line right here and I kept seeing these little brush piles just like that, right off of that grass pile. Brush piles and glass, grass clumps and a couple of rocks. Dropped the old crawfish jig down there and that dude right there thumped it. So it's hot, it's bluebird, but we found a fish. All right, so bottom of the night, two men on. Two outs, we're down by one. Actually, he is down by one. So he's about to pull up on this water tower and uh, see if he can't use live sight to put a fish in the boat and get that white stripe off the middle of his back. <laughs> Only as good as you guide, man. Well, if not, if not, he's going to, he's done his job as a guide. I caught a fish, caught more than I caught on Table Rock. So, um, but what we're gonna do is see if we can't pull one out. If not, I gotta get on the road, go hook up with the guys from Oklahoma Kayak Anglers to do a little fishing tomorrow at a place that I was told to remain nameless. And then I'm gonna hook up with you guys and fish uh, Sahoma, is that how you say it? Lake Sahoma. Lake Sahoma tomorrow evening for the uh, Bassathon evening get together, fishathon, thingamajigger. Um, anyway, so here we go. Let's see if that guy right there can make live sight work and get that stripe off his back. All right, so we've got this obvious giant line here, which is our water tower. So you see it's about 35 feet away. So, it's gonna get a bait up in there and move that a little bit. And obviously, wait. There he is. All right, you see the fish there? Yep. Nice one. Oh, yeah. Dance for the camera a little bit. Missile bait right in his mouth. There he is. Nice. Boom. That's success. You don't demonstrate how something works any better than that. That's right. All right, Lucas, show us exactly what's going on and what this steerable sonar is all about and oh, what the advantages are. Absolutely. So we got this giant water tower here. So a lot of place to cast, right? So I can actually look to the right of this tower and see, look at that. There's three fish playing around right on the side of it. I can look to the left side of this tower now. Look, oh, a big one, oh, and it's swimming away. Nice. So if I want to point it right at it, you can. So now, you know, I'm pretty stationary. I can flip over there. So see that guy right yep. there? I can catch him. I'm going to give it a shot over there. Now, as my bait falls, should start to see it. Coming down the, coming down it. There we go. There it is. That's my bait falling. So that's the entire water tower right there. Yeah. You can hear the ticking off the roof. You hear that? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, there's something. All right, let me flip out this way. All right, guys. So listen, it was an eventful day. We, uh, we got out here and social distanced away from everybody else. So I got to tell you this. We caught two fish. But we caught two fish when it's 94 degrees, off peak, middle of the day. And both of them we caught using electronics, finding cover in grass and then he was bouncing that off of structure and uh literally knew the fish was there so we talked about it on the water there's there's a double-edged sword that you know the fish are there and then you try to catch them but you can also know the fish are there and uh lucas kind of likened it to bed fishing sometimes you can be too in love with the fact that the fish is there that's right but it's the on the ticket is is it's a tool right it's a tool in your arsenal that differentiates what's going on below the surface it's like 3D decoder glasses for grown men. Um, I'm going to tell you this. Smash that thumbs up button if you like these kind of videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'm going to turn it over to this guy.
So let him take us out of there to tell you where you can find out more about all of the fantastic products available from Lawrence. Yeah, check us out, Lawrence.com. We've got lots of video tutorials. We did a big webinar series during the whole COVID thing. So go check those out. And uh, we love the kayak fishing. We love kayak community and we love Chad Hoover. And I'll be back to Oklahoma. I got a score to settle with these bass.